Let me be honest with you. If you have started your business and you are putting everything together financially, you're probably doing about six different things wrong. So I'm going to let you know exactly what those six different things are. And I'm going to give you information on how you can fix them so that you can have a successful running business. Keep watching. Hi there, and thanks for joining me here at the Financial Spotlight. I'm Chantrell, and I'm here to give you financial tips and tricks that are going to help you on your road to know your money. And today we are talking about the six different mistakes that small business owners usually make when it comes to their finances. And I'm going to give you some insight because I'm a tax accountant. I've been doing it for 20 years and I have worked with all types of small businesses and also independent contractors. So I've seen a lot of things over my career of being an accountant. So the first thing is that a lot of small business owners do not understand the difference between a profit and the cash flow. So let me explain it to you. Your profit is what you get after everything has been paid. So you have all of your income, everything that's coming in to the business, and then all of your expenses and your costs, etc. And then what's left over, that is your profit. Your cash flow is what's coming in to your business all throughout the year, month, week, whatever, all the money that's coming in, no matter if that has to go right back out to pay a bill or right back out to do, to take care of expenses or whatever, that is your cash flow. The second mistake is not having a budget for your expenses. And I'm always talking about budgets. I know you're tired of me, but for your business also, you need to have a budget set aside especially for your expenses. And how you're going to do that is you're going to sit down and look at what you spend every month to go out to pay bills or whatever have you. And then once you figure that out, you take uh, inventory of that for at least three to six months. And then once you know how much you're spending every single month on your expenses, then you can set up a budget that will give you exactly what amount you're going to be spending every month. And you can either go over it or you can be under that amount, but at least you have in your mind how much you will be spending every single month on your expenses. Now, this next one is a really touchy subject. It's that a lot of small businesses do not price their products or services correctly. Now, I am a victim of that because I, a lot of people say that I kind of price my services because I, I do uh, prepare taxes for people that I price my services kind of low. However, I know my clients, I know my clientele, and so I price based on my clients and their ability to pay and their experiences, etc. Now, everybody has their own way of pricing, but you do not want to price your things so low that people do not find value in them or that they're wondering, well, why is her product $5? What, what, what's wrong with it? You know, why is she only selling it for $5? So you have to say, okay, let me look at people that are in my industry that are possibly selling a similar thing and then maybe do a range of uh, amount that you would charge. So for example, say you sell um, mugs, I'm just making up a product. Say you sell mugs and you know, you want to sell your mugs for $10. But if you look on Etsy, you look on Amazon merch, you look on those type of places and you look at other people and what they're selling their products for their, their mugs for, and they're actually selling their mugs for $15 then you might want to rethink how much you're selling yours for. Maybe you want to put it up to $12. Maybe you don't want to reach 15. Maybe you want to put it up to 12, but you do need to do your research in your industry 
to have comparable prices to other people so that you are not working hard and not making enough money for your product or your service. You're tired of working a nine to five and ready to start your business? Or are you trying to add additional income to your pockets by starting a side business? Have you finished your business plan yet? If not, go ahead and down this easy to use business and financial plan template that covers everything you need to get your business started today. There are 53 pages in this professional business plan and every single page is going to prepare you for your business. So go ahead and download it today. Now this fourth one goes back to making sure that you have a savings for your business. And I talk about it all the time when I'm talking about setting up your business and setting up your business finances. You need to make sure that you have money saved up just in case you have no idea what emergencies could come up in your business or in your life even that you will need to take care of financially. So it is very important for you to have a savings, for you to have an emergency fund set up. Make sure, please, that you put it in a high yield interest savings account. If you're not going to put it in a CD or into an IRA or any of that or any of those things, please make sure you put it somewhere where you're getting interest on the money, but you can also liquid it, liquid, make it in liquid um, quickly. And when I say liquid, that means that you can go to the bank or whatever your credit union or whatever and get that money out quickly. You don't wanna have to wait a couple of days before you can get the money out. Now, number five is one that I come across a lot when dealing with my clients that have small businesses. So, a lot of people do not separate their finances, their business and their personal, but it is so very important that you separate your business finances from your personal finances. And if you don't want to start a business account, a business bank account, I understand that because sometimes banks will charge you a fee because you're a business, right? What you can do, my suggestion is even in your personal bank account, you can have, you can open up multiple accounts in your personal bank account. And one of those accounts can be designated for your business or two or three of those accounts can be designated for your business. You can have a savings for your business and you can put a nickname on it and say, business savings or whatever. And you can have a checking for your business. And on that, you can put business checking and there, and that way, you know, what is going in and what's going out, maybe even ask for a separate card for this account. If you're having, if you use debit cards, etc. but you want to make sure you're separating your finances to make sure that you know, what is your personal income and expenses and what's your business income and expense. And this last one, might not apply to every business. It's number six, and it is not paying your quarterly estimated taxes on time. Now, I understand that some businesses have not made money for the first one, two, or three years that they've been established. So you might not have taxes or you might not have to pay taxes, but once you've been established for over three years and you're making a consistent amount of money coming into your business, then you need to start setting up your quarterly estimated taxes and you need to make those payments on time. If you're not making those payments on time, the IRS will charge you a fee and interest. They will charge you penalties. They will charge you interest. And so you want to make sure that you're making, making those payments on time if you're owing. And nine times out of 10, if you have a business that's lucrative, you're making a lot of money, a lot of money is coming in, you will owe 
at the end of the tax year. So you're going to need to pay those estimated taxes. That is so very important. I hope that this information has helped you. These are six different ways that you can make sure that you are on top of your finances for your business. You don't want to make the six mistakes. You want to fix those mistakes and use my information that I gave you to make them better. Make sure that you like this video if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, I ask you to please subscribe to the Financial Spotlight family. We'd love to have you. Have a great one. Bye.